Welcome back to the line, opinion panelists. Looking ahead to the June primary, the race for the Republican nomination for governor is taking a lot of the headlines right now, but a recent campaign finance report is raising questions in the Democratic race for attorney general as well. State Auditor Brian Colon has received more than $150,000 from out-of-state law firms supporting his campaign. There's speculation these donations could lead to state contracts on big cases if Mr. Colon were to be elected. Now, Senator Snyder, let me talk, start with you on this. Should this be concerning to voters? Is this a little bit of an inside political baseball? Or how big is this in your view? I think for most voters, they weren't even aware that right. that, that was going on. I think that most people's immediate reaction is what? Mm -hmm. You're taking campaign contributions from the people that you're then awarding contracts to. Uh, but in reading about this, I guess we've been doing it for quite some time. And uh, I, I don't know that, certainly don't advocate that just because we've been doing it, it makes it legitimate. Mm -hmm. But I looked up, I did a little research and the Centers for Public Integrity had a list. Uh, unfortunately, the report was from 2016. So I don't know if New Mexico has changed any laws or not. Maybe y'all can help me with that. But there were only uh, 15 states that had any restrictions like that on attorney general race, any kind of restrictions of any kind on attorney general races. New Mexico was one of them. But when you re read on into it, you found that it's perfectly acceptable for them to accept contributions while they're running, before, it, when they're elected, the only, and then after a contract has been awarded, the only restriction is they may not accept contributions during the negotiation of a contract. Hmm. Well, if you've already, if you've already been given the money up front, right. that, that little caveat is, is worth nothing in my opinion. And I, there's a part of me that goes, I understand when, when they say they're trying to save money by combining with other states and doing, and you end up with a, I, I know, I believe it was uh, New York City, Washington, D.C., where it seemed to be the basis for most of the out-of-state big law firms that New Mexico has contracted with. Have you noticed that? Uh, That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It really is these big uh, New York and D.C. firms. Oh, like. Okay. And I thought it was interesting right. that one candidate, Mr. Colleen, has accepted a number of contributions from people with contracts currently or in the past. And uh, Mr. Bruce has not, but he's accepted it from local firms. Right. Well, I'm not sure what that says either. Just, but let me, let me, let me ask uh, Senator Feldman that very question. Yeah. I appreciate that point that um, Mr. Torres, the other Democratic candidate in that AG's race has not taken any major donations from out of state. But 32,000 from in-state, do you cut a difference there between in-state and out-of-state for these kind of donations? Not really. Yeah. Not really, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is part of a bigger problem, the problem of a conflict of interest and the problem of quid pro quo, uh, mm -hmm. making a contribution and then getting a contract. We do have well, only we have very few laws that cover this mm -hmm. and because it looks almost like legalized bribery, you know, right. uh, and uh, we do have one law uh, that I was involved with. And that is at least the at least the people that are bidding on the contracts have to disclose that they've made a campaign contribution mm -hmm. to the attorney general. That's you know, I thought that was the least they could do. Sure. Um, <laughs> kind of but, there. you know, but but Diane's right. I mean, this is a time honored practice that goes back to to Patricia Madrid, to Udall, oh, to mm -hmm. uh, everyone. And the and what the attorney general say is that unless they have the top notch lawyers, uh, the trial lawyers from out of state who are uh, who are expert at taking on big pharma, taking on the tobacco That's industry. Right. Uh, we're not, we, we're little New Mexico. We're not going to, we're not going to get very far when it comes to protecting consumers. And so um, this has been the, the reason in the past. Um, and it's, it's somewhat valid. I think the whole thing would be, um, would be settled if, if attorney generals like our judges were able to participate in a public financing ah. uh, program 
where Maybe. they didn't have to worry about being beholden to their contributors. Yes. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another solution. That's interesting. Ed, let me read you a quote here from a fellow you guys know, Damon Ely, um, Democratic State Senator, Senator from, uh, State Representative, excuse me, from Corrales. His problem with this is, a uh, quote, he said the extensive use of outside lawyers has eroded legal expertise within the AG's office. And the second point I wanted you, to, to, you guys to touch, he says outside firms have an incentive to settle a case quickly in order to get paid quickly. I, <laughs> there's something about that just seems like such a dead end, Ed. I, I just, I don't get it. Let's talk about the idea of the, of the it erodes expertise in the AG's office. Do you agree with that? I mean, clearly, I think that's one of the reasons that was stated for going externally is right. because that's we right. lack the expertise here. So it's, you know, you get, you know, you, you lose your, your expertise by not giving locals the opportunity to acquire that expertise. Yep. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, that's... And, that's, and, that's, to that's, interrupt, that's, and to make the big dough. Do you know what I mean? Because right. <laughs> it's all going to Dallas and Chicago and New York at this point. So, you know. And Gene, that goes to your second point. What yeah. are the motivations here, right? I mean, if, if you're local, you may have more local motivations in the interest of your of your community. But if you're a New York firm or a L.A. firm, well, it's about the bottom line. It's how do you make the, right. the, the quickest buck for your firm? Mm -hmm. And in all cases, most cases go to some sort of settlement phase. And, and a lot of times that's the quickest way to get in, get out for, your, for, your, for the maximum uh, benefit. And so, yeah, I, I think those are, 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 are two valid uh, concerns mm -hmm. that were made. But Gene, this is a sign of the times. This is, this is the way politics are done That's these right. days. Under uh, Citizens United, the United States Supreme Court decision of 2010, it really opened up the avenues of contributions, especially with multinational uh, corporations. I mean, we are seeing more and more of that, yeah. but it's not a local problem, it's a national problem because it's allowed. And so the question really is, do we want to play by the rules and, and, and use the rules to our advantage, or do we look at this from another another angle? And right now, all appearances are that uh, that, that the current uh, state auditor, Mr. Mm -hmm. Colon, is playing by the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the other side is saying, well, you know, maybe or maybe not. I'm not sure what their what their reasoning for not getting out of state contributions are. But uh, in, in full disclosure here, I was a candidate for the DA's office in 2016. Mm -hmm. I, my campaign was outspent eight to one by hmm. by my opponent, Mr. Torres, and he received huge funding from from Mr. Soros. And so, if you're local, if you're the local candidate, and you and you're not getting those external right. uh, contributions, right. you yeah. you're probably saying, "Hey, wait, 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 you know, where's the fairness in this?" However, if you are getting those those contributions that are they're legal under Citizens United, you're saying, "Hey." I'm playing by the rules. So sometimes it's, it's a, a decision that, that you have to make. That's right. But the Supreme Court has allowed this to happen. And until there's a decision to the contrary, mm -hmm. this is the way the political game is being played. Mm -hmm. Senator Snyder, I you have a point? Yeah. Yes, actually, it's a concern is I was reading and in the one of the most recent, the settlement uh, with the solar company is ah. in the news, we hear oh, so-and-so AG and the state of New Mexico won this lawsuit and this amount of money has been given to New Mexico. Well, where does that money go when it gets here? Mm -hmm. And as, as I understand what I've been reading is not a single New Mexican who was involved in the case got any of the money that came in. Right. It, was, it came in, went out to the big company law firms it went into the state, but the and that they our AG signed a non-disclosure agreement that would not tell people what happened and why it happened. Mm -hmm. But they can research; they cannot find a single New Mexican who was involved in the lawsuit getting compensation from the settlement. We're a little short on time. We're going to have to end it there. But that's interesting, and I think that makes the point that Senator Feldman made just a bit ago perhaps with some reform about how this money is doled out. They don't, we don't have to have our AG folks with hat in hand across state borders. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you once again to our panel. We'll be back in just over 10 minutes to talk about oil and gas leasing opening back up on public lands. Up first, 
The latest on a settlement regarding pollution at the Fort Wingate Depot. New Mexico Natural Resources Trustee Maggie Hart Stebbins discusses the settlement with environment correspondent Laura Paskus, as well as another potential payout over the Gold King mine spill.